This is Evie from An Expat in Panama and today I want to talk to you about permaculture and what we've implemented so far at Ablaya, the Spanish school that I'm part of. So, how did we start? We have this really cool uh, building in the Caribbean in Bocas del Toro with uh, this huge garden but you know this garden was only grass and you know it had some ornamental plants but it wasn't really used for anything. So we thought you know why waste all this space for nothing and use it instead to produce something. So we decided to create our own urban garden and grow our own food. Now, we are pretty new to permaculture. Here is what we've done so far and uh, Ludo is going to explain to you which, which aspects of permaculture we've implemented so far at the school. Check it out. Here in Ablaya in Bocas, we're trying to implement the, well, all the aspects of permaculture. And the first step is to reuse uh, whatever we produce here, which for now has been only uh, waste from the kitchen. We have tons of wood chips, well it's like wood shivers, so that's something that is great for us. It helps us here to make a nice path to walk around because the main problem we have in the Caribbean is soil erosion. So there's a lot of rain, the soil goes away, it's clayish, when you walk on it, it gets muddy, it's not really nice. The other uh, component we have is coconuts, so there's plenty of them, they're falling all the time from the trees, they're totally free and they're not being used really, uh, taking advantage of. So. This here, we're using it for the path, uh, that's one application, but also the fiber of the coconut when you open it can be used as a mulch for the garden. Another thing we have here uh, that is really um, available around are broken surfboards. So instead of throwing them around since it's made of foam and it's not really uh, biodegradable, we are trying to reuse those um, to make signs. This is the composting area here. Uh, traditionally the compost you have to turn it around which is a bit uh, of a physical task that can be a bit of a cause sometimes so here the idea is to have one of those barrels the idea being of filling it with organic matter and carbonic matter instead of having to shovel around to mix it you just give it a spin so here we're trying to separate our trash um, here we have organic matter and uh, plastic and cardboard here we have coconuts and here we have another compost here which is a lasagna compost where we layer organic matter and um, wood or wood chips again a coconut fiber and trying to have a slow um, well a more traditional compost compared to the tumbling compost the resource we have uh, easily available here is green water uh, the only problem is nobody really stores it there isn't any lakes here or, or places where the water stays so something when I help local people to do more is to catch the water from the rain so it's really simple you catch it from your sink roof and uh, you can drink the water and use it for your garden especially in dry season to demystify a little bit uh, what is gardening about uh, trying to help local people, local families to generate a little uh, extra income and being exposed to organic food and uh, organic uh, gardening and urban gardening. The idea is to be a demonstration center so people can come see how easily it can be done and how much it can produce. The composting is something that we want to really uh, implement in the host families we work with here. So we have this uh, kind of garden bed here, which is fairly simple. It's called a wicking garden bed. Uh, it has a layer of sand at the bottom. A third of it is with sand and two thirds is soil. Um, there's a pipe here that goes all the way to the bottom and then spread over the rest of the garden bed uh, through another PVC pipe. Water is poured into the PVC tube and spreads in the sand and anytime the plant needs water, it will be absorbing water from the soil, right, the two third layer here. Okay. Um, the idea on the long term to answer the question would be to have some of these garden beds in the host families, mm -hmm. also the composting system like the tumbling compost we saw earlier and the water catchment system like we have at the school. So every family here can produce a little bit in the garden without having to pay for the water or pay for the soils. 
painting the signs, uh, doing some research on different topics, uh, designing a little bit for things to implement in the garden. Yeah, if I have people that are more skilled and know a little bit about permaculture already, we can get into more uh, implementing new system or they can show us a system that they've been using that work. If people have no experience at all, then the idea is to assist me in the different tasks. Once we have the garden ready and we can use it as a support, the idea will be to do some workshops for the kids, for example. All right, guys, I hope that you like this video. I want you to know that we are currently looking for long-term volunteers, so one month or more, um, to help us with this project. So the only requirements are that you need to have some expertise in permaculture. We want you to teach us how to improve, not the other way around. So this is not a, a volunteer project to learn about uh, permaculture. This is you improving our project. So we are looking for experts in the field and in, in exchange we'll give you free Spanish lessons, lodging and tours. So please contact us at the email address provided at the end of this video. And if you've enjoyed it and want to see more of these videos, I have my own YouTube channel. It's called An Expat in Panama. You'll see the details below. So let's spread the permaculture love. Thank you for watching. Bang, 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 b